Hello, I'm Dave Mowitz and welcome to Successful Farming. On today's program, I head to auction to get a feel for seed tender prices and then feature another shop hack, you know, a shop get by or make do. On Aegis Iron, we tour a unique fleet of classic combines created by Robert McKinney out of Walla Walla, Washington. You have got to see this collection. And after these brief messages, I tour an older shop that was modified to serve the multiple needs of the Walter Hutterite colony. So please stay tuned. We travel to central Washington in the Schoonover Hutterian Colony for today's Chop Shop. Now, what attracted me to this shop was how the colony used an existing building, which came with the farmstead they bought, to create one of the hardest working shops I've ever seen. Each and every task is tackled here, from changing oil to rebuilding engines to fabricating machinery. Let's go talk to Herb Walter about the colony shop. This is a colony that's just not two crops, which you'd find typical of a lot of Midwest farms. You have a lot of moving parts to this operation. What are the crops that you're raising? Well, the main one is wheat, and then potatoes, and then there's a canola seed. Really? That's quite canola a seed. process in itself, yes, isn't it? Yes, and then there's alfalfa, and then there's uh, timothy hay. The colony came here and this building was already here at that time. Then. Yep. And it came with the door placement and the way it was laid out. So at that point in time, it was pretty much a bare shop. How did you kind of decide to lay stuff out? Was, or was that just evolved over time? Evolved, it evolved, because everything like it is now wasn't in the first 10 right. years. Well, and you were doing a lot of fabrication work and things like that. So I noticed that one of the nice things you have, you have the main door at the end, pretty typical for shop. But you have the two side doors, which is kind of nice to have. Yeah. So you'll have access. So how many vehicles, like in the winter, will you be working on in here at one time? You'll pack Maybe four. Really? Pack them in. So the type of work you're doing is just not repair and maintenance, just light maintenance. You're you're doing fabrication in here, major welding. Trailers, for repairing trailers. Right. One of the neatest things I've ever seen, I've never seen this in a farm shop before, grocery carts. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Where did you come up with that idea? Just seen one laying around and decided, let's do something with this thing. So you adapt the cart to the need. Mm -hmm. Right, and you have all kinds of variations. You even have a six-wheeled cart there. Yep. So that was because it was a heavier load. Heavier weight. One of the best features of the colony shop is their extensive parts storage. In addition to the parts room they have behind me here, they also have, for example, hydraulic parts on a roll-around cart that they can take right to the equipment in the shop. Another nice feature I really like was your parts storage. You have the loft with the bigger items. But what do you have back in the room here then? The nuts and bolts and small rivets and grease fittings. And all the cabinets too. All the cabinets full of... Wow, that's a, that's a wealth of part storage mm -hmm. they have. So what did you determine you needed? Was it over time you thought, well, we'll lay in you know, such a side bolt, or was it one of those things that grew as... as it, like it grew. Right. Yeah, uh, just and, more and more always. You know, we've featured welding booms before, but none this long at 20 feet, or one that can be elevated so you could drop the wire feeder and the gun inside a trailer. Besides the shopping cart you innovated, you have a welding boom. Now, we, I've seen welding booms before, but not quite like this. This is a pretty heavy duty unit. And then it also, well describe this, how you built that and, and some of the features. Just decided uh, there's a beam in the shop. We'll put her against the beam so it can fold outside the building. Oh, so it's in that near that door. It's then. near the door so it can go outside the building with a, with a running uh, welder on it, sliding welder. And we can go up and down with the boom Oh, to get into gosh. trailers on very high. Oh yeah, a grain trailer or, grain or, trailers or, or your potato trailers mm -hmm. or what have you. Use what, like about a three or four inch I-beam? 
I think it's a six inch. Six inch. So that has a lot of strength. How long is that? I think it's 20 foot. So you have quite a reach and, and it's a jib. It yeah. jibs around or swings around. And then you put the, the Miller unit, that's the remote unit, mm -hmm. uh, at the end with the spool. And then that rolls out on a little caster, dolly. Or a dolly that you guys yep. built in. And this was just wheels that mm -hmm. you found that you put yeah. together. So when it swings out, you'll take the door. If you have something outside you have to weld, you can take that in yeah. as high as the door and then reach quite a ways mm -hmm. out and yep. do the welding. So you use that quite a bit. Mm -hmm. Ask Herb Walter one of the best investments that they made in the colony shop. He would say it would be this auto lift. Herb, the one thing I noticed over here, auto lift, and I get a lot of debate from guys wondering if they ought to put one in or not. It, it, was it a good investment for you? Yes, that's the second one already. Oh, you've already worn one out or? Didn't wear it out, but it's just too small for the newer pickups. So what capacity will that? The old one was 6,000, this one here is 14. Oh, three quarter ton trucks yeah. and the larger ones yep. that are getting larger. Oh yeah. And you could put a dually truck pickup Easy. on that. And that's why you position between that particular mm -hmm. door, because you can just drive it in. Do right, the yep. And then your lubrication storage is over in that corner of the shop then, mm -hmm. close to where you'd be doing that work. Yep. So what's the advantage of a lift? As a, does it save you when you're like doing chassis lubes and stuff like that? Yeah, lube and working transmission, checking oil. Yeah, and that's a huge advantage to be able right. to get it up in the air. Mm -hmm. And we couldn't have a pit in this shop because of Rome. Oh. So that was the only way a thing right. that worked is that kind of a lift. The other feature your son pointed out to me was you ran out of storage for stuff and your solution was, because you, you've got some other building plans here. You want to add another potato storage building and uh, other buildings that you're putting up for all the different functions of the colony. You needed storage. So where did you turn to get extra storage? Those uh, shipping containers. Yeah, and you were just finding those. We were just finding those around for dirt cheap. And you have containers dedicated to certain parts. Mm -hmm. Certain parts, yeah. So that's your extra storage that comes along. Yeah, for tires and yeah. for cementing and construction, ones for irrigation. Kind of a great way to be able to add oh, storage. Oh yes, isn't very it? good. So in the future, any future plans for the shop? You're thinking maybe expanding it? Oh yes, we're always planning, but... Would you use this as the base then and then no. add on to it? No, I don't think so. You would start Start a, a new shop. Yeah, so if there was one thing you, or a couple things you'd like to add, which you would in your new shop, would that be ventilation or bigger welding area or just bigger space? Maybe a crane. Oh, a trolley crane. Yeah, this shop does not have a crane. That's about the only thing. Yeah, you're using forklifts. Forklifts instead. right now, and it's working. Yeah, it seems to work along the way. We're gonna have to return to the Schoonover shop in the future as Herb and his crew are contemplating an addition to this side of their existing building. And I can't wait to see what they come up with. I'll see you again next week on another Top Shop Tour. Join me at auction to see what seat tenders are selling for. And then I feature a great shop storage idea you can create from PVC pipe. So please stay tuned. Spring planting is just around the corner. I hope, with all the snow, this underfirst seed tender would be just the thing to make planter refills go faster. Now open tank tenders litter the used marketplace, and for good reason, and it is a preferred way to handle seed. But farmers might be looking for a second unit to handle seed boxes if they're changing varieties a great deal. So this Seed Pro 400 with its ability to hold up to four boxes would be ideal. Now this tender features an eight inch wide belt conveyor, which is certainly gentle on seed. 
It's a 2012 model and has seen eight years of use. As such, it's a piece of equipment you'd really need to spend some time inspecting before buying. For example, the condition of the belt conveyor would certainly be a component that needs a thorough inspection. And I think you'd want to start the Honda engine to see how well it operates. You know, to get some inspection pointers, as well as advice on pricing out the Seed Pro 400, let's go talk to Tim Myers with the Steffes Group before the Seed Tender sells. Tim, we're looking at that Seed Pro 400. That's an under first machine. The vast majority of Seed Tenders are bulk machines, but that one could take four boxes. So how do you put a price on something like that? I mean, it's a 2012 but still could fit into a lot of operations. It could, and the Pro Box has definitely got some options that the bulk Boy. does not. Tim, the bulk units are more popular than the box units. Yeah, box have their place, especially if you're changing up varieties a lot. So that makes it kind of tough to be able to figure out where you want to position yourself when you find a used machine like that. Well, Dave, I agree with you. That thing has some strikes that are against it. Number one is it's a box instead of a bulk unit, mm -hmm. which was ordered that way, so folks obviously want that, and it has some versatility that a bulk unit doesn't. The other thing that's against it is it's a bumper pull, and a gooseneck would probably bring a little bit more money. In my world, I think a gooseneck would probably add another three to $5,000, mm -hmm. but Unreferth makes a nice unit no matter whether it's bulk or it's box and I think some of the things that you want to look at when you're buying a unit like that in a 2012 it's not used every day in fact it's probably only used about three weeks a year and it's put back in the shed but a bulk unit you know look at the motor and a Honda motor is on most of them and that that was a great unit number two is check the belts out and make sure that they look okay and those tires you know in 2012 check those tires uh, even though they don't have a lot of miles on them they still might have some issues with them so that might be some expenses that which you would run into after you buy it. Tim thanks for that information. Let's watch that under first seed pro 400 sell. 16, 5, 17,000, 17, but it's 17, but it's 16, 5, but it's down 17, 17, but it's down 5, 17, 5, 17, but it's down 5, but it's 17, 5, but it's 18, you're still out. 18, but it's 18, but it's 18, but it's 18, but it's 18, not 5, 18, 5, internet, 18, but 5, 5, but it's 5, but it's 18, 5, 18, but it's down 5, but it's 18,000, 5, 5, but it's 5, but it's 18, 5, 19, and 19, but it's 19, but it's 19,000, 18, 5, but it's down 19, to buy 19, but it's 19, 18, 5, but it's 19, 18, but 19, one time. And 18, 5, but 19, but 19, 18, 5, but 19, 18, 5, but 19, 19, 5, 19, 19, 5, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, the marketplace is loaded with a ton of brand new 2018 and 2019 units with asking prices ranging from $24,000 up to $30,000. Now one way to explore the value of seed tenders is to certainly get online and search for dealer asking values. Also, to help you price out equipment, you're going to be able to buy and sell we offer two free appraisals from the Authority on Equipment Prices, and that is Iron Solutions. Used by dealers across North America, Iron Solution gathers actual dealer sales, auction prices, and wholesale transactions. To get two free appraisals each month, go to agriculture.com slash what's it worth. Now, for more information about Steffes Sales, go to the website at steffesgroup.com. I'll see you again next week on another Steel Deals Report. Have you ever improvised a repair, fashioned a homemade tool, or created a shop get by or make do? Then you'll appreciate today's shop hacks. You know how you turn a drill into a rotary brush for cleaning parts? Well, you go to the house and you look around for a bottle washer or a toilet brush or a similar round brush like I have here. 
Don't tell your wife you're taking them outside though. Now what you do is you go and cut the handle off like I did in this toilet brush and you insert it and then basically lock it down. Now you're ready to do some heavy duty cleaning. Now the tips on flexing hose grease guns sure have a bad tendency to flop around and into the dirt and grime when you set the grease gun down. Now to keep the tips clean, what you do is you cut a length of stiff tubing like PVC plumbing or some type of hose that is large enough to house the tip. You strap it to the body of the grease gun with zip ties or hose clamps. And when you get done greasing, you insert the tip and you keep it clean. Tired of having to wrap cords around power tools to put them away for storage? or just laying in there and having the cords get all tangled up together in storage. What you do is you cut a length of large diameter PVC pipe, I had this one left over from a plumbing job, and you screw them into the bottom of storage shelves. Now you tuck the cords in the pipe away securely, place the tool on top of the shelf. We would love to hear about your shop shortcuts, tips, or make-dos. Send us your shop hack. If we use it on the show or in Successful Farming Magazine, we're gonna pay you a $200 reward. Send us a detailed description and images to the link below. I'll see you again next time on another shop hack. Join me as I travel to Walla Walla, Washington to tour a fantastic collection of classic combines on Ageless Iron after these brief messages. Hey, welcome to Aegis Iron, and do we have a special treat for you. We got a fleet of antique combines. This is the first time I've ever featured a combine, let alone an entire fleet, non-denominational fleet of combines. And this is the pride and joy of Robert and Brett McKinnon, and you're in Walla Walla, Washington, just not too far, here at the foot of the Blue Mountains too, which is just an absolutely gorgeous area. It's a very diverse agricultural area, which is always a lot of fun to come out here. But I'm more fascinated with the combines. You gotta tell me about this. The kids were small, you decided to put it in a local parade. Was that in Walla Walla? Yeah. And what was the inspiration there? What, you never see a combine in a parade? What the heck, here we come. But it's a cool combine, don't get me wrong. Sure. There took a little inspiration there to come up with that idea. Well, it, it, and and you gotta have nerves of steel too, because you're gonna take an old combine and put in the parade, and what happens if it <laughs> breaks down? But also, I mean, just thinking outside the box, <laughs> you've got three that. kids, who's gonna babysit them if you don't put them on the combine as you're in the parade? So we thought, you know, we could put a false bottom in the bulk tank and it, with that round bulk tank, it'd look like a little castle, if you will. Oh. And they could throw candy out because every kid loves to throw candy at oh, their buddies yeah. in the parade. Yeah. And, and I'll tell you what, honestly, Dave, when somebody comes up to you after the parade and says, and we heard this often, that was the best part of the parade. Thank you so much. It's, suddenly, it's like everybody's having fun, us included. Yeah and it makes it worthwhile, because it is a lot of work to transport these old combines. We used to drive it from out here, clear into town, and take it to the parade, and that was a long trip. What led you to the I, second one? I worked for a farmer in, in uh, my hometown of Waitsburg oh, in okay. high school, right. and he had a buddy, that, uh, a logger buddy, that was working about 100 miles from here, and he said that there's a John Deere 45 combine that yeah. you may be able to buy. It looks like it's restorable. Would you be interested? You ought to go look at it because evidently they liked our Minneapolis molding. And so we went and looked at it and towed it home backwards, actually with a dolly that we had made. And of course, being a John Deere, who John Deere is gonna be more popular than a Minneapolis oh, molding sure. in yeah. most eyes. Yeah. Anyway, it was an immediate hit. And so we had two combines in the parade and a, did a you place do the for the floor too in the thing. We did. Uh, you're up to two combines. Get the mini, the beautiful mini. You got this John Deere 45. If you're thinking I got more kids and kids friends, so I need another combine, right? Or was it you got coerced to get another combine? How did that work on the third one? Well, the third one, uh, a good friend of mine was at an auction and he saw a, a Massey Harris 35 sell. And I didn't realize they made a self-propelled in 
uh, in the 35 model. Mm -hmm. And I asked him, I said, this was a pull type combine. And he said, no, it was a cell propelled. And yeah. so I went home and did some research and I saw that the 35 was a cute little cell propelled and it's like, the saliva was really flowing. Oh. And I said, I wonder if I could find that guy, because this particular guy wasn't interested in buying it himself. So yeah. I pursued it, and I, the guy I talked to on the phone that owned it, that had bought it at the auction, was willing to sell it for a, a profit, yeah. which is fine. Yeah. Anyway, he, he was a six foot four man that weighed 240 pounds, and he described this combine as quite small. He said, when I go to get on the ladder, it feels like it's gonna come over the top of me. It's that small, and it is quite small. It, he was exaggerating, but anyway, I went and looked at it, and we had to have it. Yeah. It was, it was, a, it was a no brainer. Well, I tell you what we're gonna do. This is such a great story. We're not out of combines in the wonderful McKinney Combine Collection, so we're gonna return next week and continue the saga of the combines. Please join us next week for another outstanding show. We are featuring outstanding farm inventions on all around the farm. And then I head to auction to watch the hottest pieces of tillage equipment, vertical tillage implements, bring top dollar at sale. I've got great shop hacks for you in the same episode and then continue my review of the Robert McKinney Combine Collection in Washington State. See you next week right here on Successful Farming. Hi, I'm Dave Mowitz. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, hit subscribe right here if you haven't already, and click that little bell right here to be notified when we post a new video. And click here to see more great episodes from Successful Farming Television.